In the last video we asked you to draw the vector A which is 6 meters per second at 120 degrees. So we know that it starts here and it goes out this way like this and we would of course use a ruler to get that length. This right here is the magnitude of A and the magnitude of A is 6 meters per second. Notice the units go with the magnitude. The overall vector would of course have an arrow over it. This angle all the way back over to here is 120 degrees where this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. However, it would be alright to instead have just drawn this angle there which is 90 degrees and is actually more useful for breaking the vector into its components with the triangle because now you've got a triangle there there's the opposite side so you can use the sign to find this length and then put a minus sign because it's negative and you can use the cosine to find this length because it's the adjacent side all right moving on to other things some special vectors there are some special vectors whose purpose is to help us find direction. These are known as unit vectors. And a unit vector is a vector with a magnitude of 1 and has no units. So its only purpose is just to give direction. Now, unit vectors are connected with coordinate systems and different shapes in physics and engineering require different coordinate systems to make the math simpler. Most of the things that we'll deal with in this course, at least early on, we use the Cartesian coordinate system because we're working in things that fit the shape of a box or cube. Uh, so in this case, in three dimensions, this would be X, Y, and the Z axis. And I want to say something about what I'm doing along the X. There's a unit vector whose length is 1 and points in the positive x direction and that unit vector is given i hat for the symbol. There's also a vector that goes one unit along y and its symbol is j hat and there is one unit vector that goes along z and its symbol is k hat. So, k hat points in plus z direction j hat points in plus y direction and last but not least, I hat points in plus x direction. And we'll see that we can use these along with multiplying by scalars to tell us the direction. So for instance, if I want to say I'm moving along x, I say I move so far in the I hat direction. If I want to go in the negative x direction, I just say I move a negative so many steps along x. That's just like a number line. Likewise, when I mean this number line here, the y number line, then I always say I'm walking so many steps in the j hat direction. And if I'm walking along this number line, I say so many steps along the k hat direction. Now people always ask me, well, so why do you use I, J, and K? Oh, because everybody knows the alphabet starts with I. No, I don't know. If you used X hat, Y hat, and Z hat, I know how that would be confusing because you could end up things that look like X times X hat. And if you lost a hat, it would look like X times X, which you get you X squared. So this is a way it avoids those sort of confusions. But why they chose I, J, and K, I don't know. But that is the convention that everybody uses. Now, some problems, like circular motion among others, do not fit in a rectangular type of coordinate system. In other words, if you're trying to describe mathematically the shape of a cylinder, then 
Putting it in Cartesian coordinates would be trying to fit a round peg in a square hole. It can be done, but it makes the math harder. Puts in square roots and other things in all the math. So what we'll do is change and use a different type of coordinate system for those type of problems. And the coordinate system they use in three dimensions is called cylindrical coordinate system. And if you don't have a Z component, in the same way that if you don't have a Z in Cartesian, it's an XY, it's kind of rectangular. If you don't have it in a cylinder, then it becomes a circle. And it's known as polar coordinates. So that's a special case of cylindrical coordinates. In this case, what you're doing is trying to describe a cylinder, something that looks like that, and of course has some sides like that, and if I was a good drawer, I could draw this down. So basically you want this axis and this origin in the middle of the cylinder. Mine's not quite there, not the world's best drawer. And we want three unit vectors that describe how to get to any point on the cylinder. And so here's the three points that people traditionally use. One thing they say is that you could walk along the radius out like this. And that one has been given some different symbols to pin down, I think. Some people use row hat. I often do. But others tend to use r hat. However, it's important to know that it's only on the radius of the circle. It's not on the radius of a sphere, which I'll show you in a minute. Another thing that you need to describe this object is this angle here, which is either called theta or phi, depending on the book. You can think of a vector that's perpendicular to r hat, which is called theta hat, and that unit vector points in the direction that this little purple vector would move if you were increasing theta. And then last but not least, the third vector that describes something in this coordinate system is our old friend k hat from the previous. So k hat points in plus z r hat points in increasing radius, so along r, and theta hat points in increasing theta. Now, sometimes, and we will in this course, to avoid some of the complexity of working with this math, at least at the introductory level, we'll give you formulas that come out of this, such as what will be known as centripetal acceleration formula. And this is okay. Uh, you'll have to memorize it in some cases. But as you go on, they're not going to do that because there are a wide range of things that come out of fitting cylinders, and cylinders turn out to be very useful. For instance, pipes. If you were a chemical engineer and running oil down a pipe, well then pipe physics is very important. A cylinder can be thought of as the line of an electrical line on a coaxial cable or on a power line going from the power company. They don't make those rectangular. So the physics of that cylinder is important. Cylinders are very important because humans make them with things called lays, and so you're going to need to know at some point, depending on how far along you go, cylindrical coordinate systems. Uh, there is a third coordinate system. Besides making blocks and making cylinders, the one other thing that people tend to make, and shows up a lot in nature as well, is spheres. The Earth is a sphere, for instance. You have a ball. It's a sphere. 
Well, in the same way that trying to fit a cylinder into a rectangle makes the math hard, trying to fit a sphere into Cartesian coordinates, which means fitting it into a square hole, also makes it difficult. So again, that's not what people do. They use a different coordinate system to make the math easier. So I'll do my, oops, I'm going to say I'm going to do my best here. Draw a sphere. Not a very good sphere, I could tell you that. Uh, let me Let's see if I can draw. So not a very good sphere, but you get the idea. In this coordinate system, again, there are three vectors that define a point in space. One of them goes straight out along the radius, and that's known as r hat again, but notice it's not along the xy plane. It's straight along the radius of the sphere. The second one deals with this angle here. That angle is called theta in this coordinate system, and it's perpendicular to r hat and points in the direction of an increasing theta. And the last one occurs that if you think of this projected down here into the xy plane, it's related to that angle there which is called phi, and so it points in the direction of increasing phi. Three vectors, r hat, increasing r, theta hat, increasing theta, phi hat, increasing phi. You can think of this as being a gun barrel. The gun barrel can be tilted down some angle rotate it around by changing phi, and then the bullet would have to go a certain distance in R. Two angles and one position. Notice there's always three unit vectors that are required to describe a point in three-dimensional space. We won't use spherical coordinates till much, much later in the semester, but I put them in your notes now, just so they're there. In fact, there are many other coordinate systems the engineers and scientists use, but these three are the ones that are most important. If you get into certain fields, you might use ellipsoidal coordinates or parabolic coordinates or others, but everybody needs to know these three. All right, that finishes this video.